But does that mean that the men have less standards and don't care when, when it comes to short term sexual body? When it comes to short term sexual access, absolutely 100% yes. If you're saying that uh, the question you're asking, here's your clip. If your question you're asking is, <laughs> are men sluttier than <laughs> women when it comes to short term sexual it's access? The, the answer is obviously yes. Because here's the thing. So I've seen different studies when it comes to cheating, and I, hopefully I'm going to have Matt and Murphy on this summer to come on. He's a he's a, he studies um, human psychology. He studies uh, make make choices or whatever. Uh, he studied anthropology and evolutionary psychology uh, from Oxford. And he, one of the things he studies is cheating. He's like an expert on cheating, statistics on cheating. It's really fascinating stuff. Um, and one of the things he talked about with cheat. Oh man, I forgot what the the statistics. Were. Oh yeah, I remember somewhere in the area of. And don't quote me on this, but it's like. 15% of women and 25% of men, or it's 20% of women and 30% of men. That's about where the cheating stats lie. Maybe, I think I, I saw one, it was 18% of women and 28% of men. Whatever it is, it's more men than women. It's about, and men cheat more by about a third than women. But here's the thing. I have literally heard you say that women cheat more than men. No, no, what I said was Sadia Khan said that. I've never said that. I don't think that women cheat more than men. There's been access Vegas's that I have come on where you say that women cheat more than men because they that. have more access to sex no, than men do. No, what I said, what I said, Sadia Khan said women cheat more than men. You know, we were reacting to a Sadia Khan uh, quote. Sadia Khan said that. I don't agree with that. I would that. have to revisit that clip. Please. Because... Yeah, I've never said that. Um, in fact, this is some, there's another place. A lot of red pill dogma states that women cheat more than men because what they consider cheating is women like allowing men to message them in their DMs. They right. A woman cheating. sneezes, he says, bless you. Yeah. Oh, she's a whore. Yeah. For me, cheating, <laughs> for me, for me, cheating is he kisses you, he touches your breasts, he touches your vagina or your butt. That to me, that's so cheating. So you don't believe in emotional cheating? Um, I do, but it's not nearly as deleterious to me as a man putting his penis in you. That's 100x worse. And so that's why another place where men and women are dimorphically different. When they when they survey men and women, uh, they would survey them and they'd ask the men, "What's worse, if a woman has no sex with a guy but falls in love with him, has like an emotional connection to a guy but doesn't have sex with him, or if she has sex with a guy uh, short term, you know, maybe maybe a hookup at a party, like a but, random one -time yeah, a random one time thing, but has no emotional connection, doesn't even have his phone number, which is worse." And then they ask the, the same thing, concept. and they ask the same thing to women. Women, by far, and I think it was like 60, 70%. We talked about this. Yeah, 60, 70% of women said that it was worse if the man had emotional an emotional connection. connection. And something like 97% of men said it was worse, the sex was worse. Because for us, it's like one of these situations where you're like, well, it didn't matter, I was drunk, and it didn't matter. And it's like, well, it's like, oh, I've heard women say this before. This is specifically women who film porn with other men than their boyfriends. They're like, honey, um, we, I had sex with him, but I didn't enjoy it. And my response to that is he enjoyed it. And like the other thing is I'm working hard to keep you as a partner. I have to invest in you. The guy you fucked in the bathroom at that party, he didn't, didn't have to invest you. in you. So that's the reason why for men, in the, it was in, maybe not 97%, but it was like 91% of men said that the short-term sexual access was worse than the, than the, the, the emotional one. Mm -hmm. um, and because for us, what is the ultimate... God, what is the ultimate negative place for a man to be from in an evolutionary standpoint? It's not that he has no sex. It's that he, he has sex with a woman but is raising someone else's child and doesn't know he's raising someone else's child. That is like the old cuckoldry. That is the ultimate like negative situation for a man. Does that make sense? Yeah. And in order for us to protect ourselves from that paternity uncertainty is for us to know that another penis has it going inside of our, our It wife. should be mandatory in the hospital when you give birth. Both parents get tested in. Yeah, it's really funny. They're, they're, so obviously, that's, thank you, Myron, because that's, that's the very, very strongly held red pill dogma, and I agree with you, obviously. Uh, it makes sense. There are certain municipalities that n make it so that women do not have to have um, uh, paternity Testing. tests. Yes. And I can understand the aspect of, like, if she felt like she was in danger. Yes. And, and that's, would be and, killed. And, and, and that's, and that's their, yeah. That's the reasoning for it. But I think when we get to the point of child support, then at that point... Oh, 100%. When then, it comes to we, having need, a... we need to have paternity certainty. Yes. There are certain municipalities where the man cannot demand that the child be DNA tested, which is outrageous to me. Now, there's another thing where you can do DNA testing in utero, but it's very dangerous for the child. Not recommended, right? You'd like to know. Yeah. Um, you know, the situation happened with Fresh recently where the girl claimed that, uh, you know, she got him pregnant. Mm -hmm. uh, or she got, or he got her pregnant. In that situation, um, you know, people. I, I saw people saying, "Well, they should test the baby's DNA like while it's in utero." 
very bad idea. Risky, don't, yeah. don't do it. Very, you have to take you a very, the a very large right. needle you have to stick. Yeah, yeah. yeah, not a good idea. But once the baby's born, of course you're going to do that. Of course. And it's the best thing for the baby, too. Like, I, I genuinely think that's the case. Um, but, yeah, the, this, this one concept where, like, women believe, like, they can have sex with multiple partners and then have a random guy raise the child. I think that was something that was way more prevalent in history, but once, like around the 1980s, once we had DNA testing, I don't think that w women can do that anymore. So right now, from what I understand from these um, DNA testing 23andMe sites, mm -hmm. it's about 4% of children are being raised by a father they think is their biological father, but it's not. So it's 4%. Now, here's the crazy thing. There are other studies, these are not sustan substantiated, but they say if you are like in the bottom 20% poorest men, it's like 10% likelihood that you're being cuckled yes but if you're in the top 20 percent wealthiest men it's like one percent does that make sense but why because women don't want to cuckold rich men but they would cuckold a poor man that's just i'm being i'm speaking in general right here. i'm speaking in general here. and these numbers but by the way don't don't hold me to these numbers because there's a lot of people that say so the thing is and statistics change a percentage but, or two but, all the time but, but it's yeah. not it's not just that but like the, the the survey size is biased because they were surveying men who were going to who were going to DNA testing centers. If you're going to a DNA testing center in the first place, you there's already a likelihood that you think your girl was cheating. Right. And if we're just selecting for men who think their girl is cheating, the likelihood that she's cheating is astronomically right. higher. Right. So like that, that's why there's a yeah. little bit of a bias there. I've seen as high as twenty percent. That's obviously nonsense. I've seen one one woman came on. She did a survey and she said she worked at a DNA testing place and she said it was eleven percent of men were actually being cuckolded or something, some number like that. But I mean that's one of the things. But as you go up the socioeconomic ladder, women are less likely to cheat. It's really funny, isn't it? Like, as men get richer, women are less I have said that a million times, and I have been fought tooth and nail on that because of the statement of women have access to sex way more yes. than so men do. I, we, this was three points ago, but I never got to this point. There's this there's this group where I'm talking about, let's just say, we'll, we'll just use these numbers. 18% of women and 28% of men. Don't hold me to that, but let's just say 28% of men cheat. There's this other group of men who wish they could cheat and but can't mm -hmm. because they're not attracted to the opposite or sex. Or have money or, or have money. But yeah. for whatever reason, cheating is generally short-term sexual access. It's yeah. not generally long-term access. Generally, unless you have two completely separate families, that's like crazy shit right there. But like for the most part, cheating is short-term sexual access. When we're talking about a like most of the time, not always. In, about a third of men can't compete in short-term sexual access ever. They get in zero short-term sexual access. They're just not a, they're just not attractive enough. What is short-term sexual access like? The like casual when, sex. Casual sex. Okay. Um, and and so from that standpoint, you would agree there's a group of men who want to cheat but can't. But can't absolutely. Okay. Is there a group of women who want to cheat but can't? A smaller percentage, but yes. Absolutely. I think it's zero percent. Like no, no, women no, no, want I, sex, they can get sex. We're I talking, think. You're talking about a woman who lives on a farm in Des Moines. Yeah, maybe she can't cheat. But for the most part, if you live in Manhattan and you're a woman and you want to cheat, there's numerous options. But that loops right back around to what I said earlier. We see the caliber of women that you're, you're like, yeah. um, a woman knows that that guy is going to be a player and she'll yeah. say, I want the opposite. And then she'll end up playing him yeah. or she'll end up dating him, the player. Well, that happens a lot of times in places like this where it's young mentality, casual sex mentality. None of the people that are looking for long-term relationships in like rural country or countries in rural cities that actually want a family and to settle down they're not going to find the player attractive the player's tactics yeah, are not going to work don't, on I, I just don't agree like i i, I think they're going to say those things but in general those women are still going to have a bad boy phase i just don't think the bad boy phase is something that's that's selected against because you're in a rural area women find bad boys attractive Women tend to find men who have dark triad traits or men who have like very strong oh, boundaries no. or very masculine traits. Look, what are you talking about? Like women find your man attractive because he's in physically good condition. You know that. Like that proves that is that goes against your whole narrative. He happens to be in good condition. Oh my god. He happens to be you in good condition. You find him attractive for a reason that other women find him attractive, which proves my point. I find him attractive because of the element of the fact that he Makes me laugh more than anybody else ever has. Which other women would find attractive? And but he doesn't talk to anybody. Okay, but, if he, the, but but he could. He could he make could, them attractive. He could, but it has nothing to do with what he looked like. Because okay. the first guy that I was ever married to had a dad bod. For sure. And it and no women ever hit on him, and I wasn't like, oh, that's sexy to me that like he has like this dad. No, like. Ugh. Well, it was sexy to you that no women ever hit on him. Yes. 
you that made your vagina wet that it, no women ever hit on. That no okay, women good. ever. And hit you on. are in the one percent of women who feel. You don't that feel way. like women feel safer that way. I feel. We just said comfort safer. And comfort comfort and is safe. not attraction. I will not have sex with someone just because my vagina gets wet if I feel like they're an unsafe. Person. Right, but you will. Your vagina will get wet for men that you don't find comfortable. That's my point. No. Okay. All right. It's fine. If I saw the hottest looking guy I've ever seen walking down the strip, but he has like rapey vibes, I'm not gonna get not rapey right. vibes. But but he does, he also like women find him attractive. Women are staring at him. But that's not that's not okay, what's cool. gonna get me. Going. I'll let you know this: that other women would find him attractive and f- would be sexually stimulated by him. And you know I'm right. Even yeah. if he's unsafe, even if he looks like the kind of guy that will kill you. It, it, women are very often, it's called his pubristophilia, and it's only women who do this, where women like were throwing their panties at Richard Ramirez, the fucking, uh, the night the soccer. Night soccer yeah, yeah, they were, they were massively attracted to Charles Manson and Ted Bundy. Women, because why? In an ancestral period, the crazy wild man who's willing to do massive amounts of violence is actually a good bet. I think that's girls with mental illness. That's not I don't like think the world. Girls. There's it so wasn't, many. Hold okay, on. No, but it wasn't the world that okay, was okay, attracted okay. to Bristophilia is <laughs> a bit mental illness. I agree with you. But I, I've noticed as I get bigger muscles, more women find me attractive. Why is that? If it's just, they should find me more attractive because fewer women want to fucking date me. As I make more money, Jesse, more women find me attractive. Why is you that? You don't they feel shouldn't... like more women find you attractive as you climbed up more and more with your success Dude, and the, not the, your muscle. You just gave more. me a third. You gave me a third reason. Yes. No, I'm saying for like sure. it, it's more attractive when a man has a career and okay, ambition sure. and now, doing well. Now but I, if you had now, no muscles. Now I have a career, ambition, muscles, and money. Now more women find me attractive. <laughs> now here's the here's the problem. Here's the problem. If what you're saying is true, it's like, well, no, because other women are going to find him attractive. No, they don't. Women don't give a shit. Now, will they not date me long term? Definitely. Will it preclude them from having sex with me because they don't find me comfortable? Yes, I agree with that. But are they sexually attracted to me? They still are. See. Hey, so you stayed to the end. If you're watching this, I have a gift for you. Click the link below, and I will show you how to position yourself as a high status man for free. Yes, free.